They claim that they are not bearable items and that they are not weapons that shoot projectiles. And so as non-firearms, they're not protected. At best, the ATF claims that they're just simply accessories and as accessories, they are not protected. They then go on to argue that even if they are arms, they are still dangerous and unusual and as dangerous and unusual items, they can be regulated. Now, the last argument that the ATF makes is that the NFA's restrictions are in fact constitutional because this process aligns with Bruin. They argue that Bruin in some dicta by Justice Kavanaugh mentioned that shall issue schemes, shall issue CCW permit schemes could be permissible under the second amendment. And so what the ATF is arguing here is that this NFA process operates as a shall issue scheme and is therefore in alignment with Bruin. And the fact that you have to register and pay a tax still doesn't violate the second amendment because it shall issue. Now, in contrast, Mr. Peterson's attorneys argue that the NFA does violate the second amendment and that it would not pass means and scrutiny. Again, I want to mention that that's not the correct type of 2A analysis, but that's what they present in their briefs. Mr. Peterson's attorneys argue to the Fifth Circuit that the defendant's motion to dismiss must be considered in the context that the indictment charged him with knowingly received and possessed a firearm. Paradoxically, the government now argues that the device for which the defendant received and possessed is not a firearm to deny the constitutional rights of the defendant as provided for by the Second Amendment.